is also out there not telling the truth about it. Joining me now, Senator Mark Warner of Virginia. He's the top Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. So Michael Cohen says in this court filing on Friday that, quote, that he, quote, remained in close and regular contact with the White House staff when he, when he was lying to Congress about the development and attempted development of a Trump Tower in Moscow. Did uh, President Trump or the White House staff know that he was lying, instruct him to lie, to, to lie? Do we know anything about that? Well, first of all, Jake, I just, in light of the earlier segment in the news the last few days, I want to add my voice in terms of a great deal of respect and admiration for President Bush. And boy, oh boy, that kind of strong leadership he brought to the world stage. Uh, we could use that now. Could you imagine a, a George Bush at this last G20 versus the performance of um, Mr. Trump? Uh, to the Mueller investigation and what happened last week with the Cohen pleading, let's step back and, and look at what we know. We know that now that then-candidate Donald Trump was still trying to do business with Russia in the summer of 2016. We know as well that his son and son-in-law had been meeting with Russians uh, to get potential dirt on Hillary Clinton. We know that his campaign aides had knew about the emails that had been stolen by the Russians. And we knew that his campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was trying to offer to brief the Russians. And when you say the campaign aides knew about, you're talking about, talking about Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos, okay. Papadopoulos. So these are all things that have been established by Mueller. And what I find particularly interesting with the revelation of Cohen's plea is that he's saying he lied to protect then candidate Trump's stories that he had nothing to do with Russia. So I, I, now I, the president seems to already be changing his story a little bit and saying, well, it was all legal. Um, I'll leave lawyers to make those determinations. But I got to believe that most Republicans who were about to nominate Donald Trump in the summer of 16 would probably have thought it was a, a relevant fact. Uh, they would like to have known that then candidate Trump was still trying to do business with Russia. Do we know whether or not we know Michael Cohen said that he was in, in, he, in contact, close and regular contact with White House staff while he was lying to Congress uh, about this uh, deal, uh, the Trump Tower in Moscow. Do we know anything about whether or not the White House was aware that he was lying? I'm, I'm not aware of that. I, obviously, this was just the plea arrangement with Michael Cohen. And clearly, most of these characters who are around Donald Trump, uh, none of them have exactly a sterling record of telling the truth. Right. But I got to believe that the special prosecutor has more details to come. Now, you said on Thursday that it might not be a coincidence that Mueller waited to announce Michael Cohen's new plea until after he had received these written answers to his questions from President Trump. Are you suggesting that President Trump was less than truthful in his answers to Robert Mueller? I'm not suggesting anything, and I'm purely speculating. But uh, I know there had been a four or five, three or four month timeout where Mueller had not taken many actions appropriately, I think, before the election. And it just appeared uh, that he was waiting to get the president's written responses before he took uh, or at least announced this um, Cohen plea. But that's pure speculation. And obviously, with this White House, that seems to not be able to go a day without a factual inaccuracy or failing to tell the truth. Um, anything's up for grabs. Jerry Nadler, uh, the congressman from New York, who's likely going to be the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, he said on Friday, quote, it's become very clear that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians. Now, he meant that not necessarily about uh, conspiracy to affect the election, but collusion and in a broader sense, having to do with business deals, having to do with whatever. Do you agree? Is there evidence of that? Again, I'm going to continue the same position I've had from the beginning of this investigation, why we've kept it bipartisan. Both Chairman Burr and I are going to reserve that final judgment until we get all our facts. We still need to see people like Michael Cohen back before our committee. But we do know this it's pretty clear that the Russians, not only did they, had they hacked into the emails, not only had they stolen other information, but they were very forward leaning in terms of offering this information to the Trump campaign. And it appears that a number of the senior Trump officials or Trump campaign officials continue to lie about those kind of contacts. I wonder though if there is a narrative here that is different from the one that a lot of Americans uh, were thinking it was, which is for instance, in March 2016, President Trump suggested or then candidate Trump suggested uh, easing uh, sanctions against Russia for the invasion of Crimea. Uh, he was in the middle of also trying to do, you know, curry favor with Putin to have this 
very lucrative deal, Trump Tower in Moscow. A Trump Tower deal that supposedly they were going to offer Putin a $50 million, $50 million dollar penthouse, penthouse suite apartment. for free. Yes, exactly. So my, maybe this, maybe there was a motivation of, of greed and avarice and business dealings and not uh, we're doing this for Russia so that they help us win the election. Maybe it's we're doing this for Russia so that after we lose the election, uh, we can make a lot of money in Russia. Well, there were clearly from the outset, I think everyone wondered why was Donald Trump, who is willing to whack almost anyone, was never willing to say an ill word about Vladimir Putin. Right. Now, was it, and we still don't know the answer to this, was it because of his business dealings or potential business dealings with Russia? Or was it because at some point during the campaign, and I think Special Prosecutor Mueller is zeroing in on Roger Stone as well, was there some communication about what the Russians had and the potential then release through WikiLeaks and the ties between WikiLeaks and Roger Stone? That's a whole chapter that I think that Mueller still has much to reveal. But I guess while on that subject of the Roger Stone part of it, is there evidence that uh, Roger Stone, Randy Credico, Jerome Corsi, any of this gang uh, actually coordinated with WikiLeaks for the release of- We've, we've not had a chance to interview Mr. Stone yet. Clearly, uh, the special prosecutor has. And uh, I, like you, and I think most of America want to hear the results of those kind of uh, interviews. Wait, this, the special prosecutor has interviewed Roger Stone? It's my inter- I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. I know they've been- been back and forth. I mean, and no, at least they've dealt with Corsi. I'm not sure whether they've dealt yeah, with Yeah, it seems to me like they've been circling around Roger Stone. They haven't necessarily gone towards him. Senator Mark 